I recognize myself for five minutes, and for, I want to start by sending my condolences to the gentleman from New Mexico uh, and our chairman uh, from Texas, uh, both of whom have endured uh, significant flooding and loss of life. And uh, Senator Lujan, um, our condolences to you and your constituents, uh, and uh, as well as as Senator Cruz and his constituents, such a, such a tragedy in, in both cases. Um, Dr. Jacobs and Mr. Jordan, welcome. Uh, and Mr. Kumar, welcome. Um, your relevant experience in weather operations and atmospheric science policy uh, is noted. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, look forward to uh, your service uh, for the American people at the National Weather Service. Uh, I come from Wyoming. In Wyoming, the weather is the news. <laughs> I'm also a rancher, and so the first thing we look at in the morning is the weather, because it affects every move we make. Um, and uh, that is true for a lot of people in Wyoming, um, whether it's a closed road because it's icy, uh, the weather turning for people who are recreating in Wyoming, people who want to know what the snowpack is in Jackson Hole at the Mountain Resort or at Targhee, uh, when blizzards are rolling in uh, and you might get trapped in your home if you don't get your vehicle out right away. I mean, these are all real life, everyday occurrences for Wyoming people. The weather is the news. So I've been in tornadoes in Wyoming, flooding, hail, wind, lightning. I know people who've been struck by lightning. I remember de dealing uh, with, I was laying with my brother uh, in an irrigation ditch while it was raining really hard because while I was on the baler and he was on the wind rower, a tornado came and literally took the hay up into the air that we were trying to bale and windrow, and so we're laying there getting hailed on in an irrigation ditch trying to stay out of the tornado. Amazing experiences. I mean, that's, that's life in Wyoming uh, with the weather. So I want to talk to you specifically about how important uh, the National Weather Service is to Wyoming. We have two major National Weather Service facilities. One is in Riverton, which is kind of in central Wyoming, and the other in Cheyenne, which is southeast. Now, a decision was made to close overnight service in Cheyenne and route evening coverage through Riverton. So the closures from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. Um, I'll, I'll want to visit with you after you're confirmed uh, about this a little more. Um, you know, that's about, I don't know, 250 or 300 miles difference between Riverton and Cheyenne. It's as different as night and day in terms of the weather experience. Uh, and um, it would be extremely helpful uh, if we could have uh, a presence in that Cheyenne Weather Service facility. Wyoming's vast. Uh, we have almost 100,000 square miles, multiple mountain ranges, tremendous topographical and elevation differences. Weather conditions are very, very local. Uh, my sister can get hailed out on her farm, and I'm just hunky-dory, just... Uh, 30 miles or 40 miles away from her. So um, the weather is um, a significant factor in our economy and in our survival and in our health and well-being. So um, I do want to work with you uh, on the, the Cheyenne Riverton issue as well as other issues regarding uh, the National Weather Service and its ability uh, to serve the people of this country. So quick question now that I've been on my soapbox. Um, what role do you see technology playing in addressing current forecasting challenges? Um, and how would you balance the ability of technology to serve versus human forecasters? Dr. Jacobs? Um, thank you for the question. So I've been to the Cheyenne office. Oh, good. Um, and one of the fascinating things they told me that I hadn't thought of as a forecaster is one of their big concerns are high wind events. Absolutely. And they're actually worried about 18-wheelers uh, getting blown off the highway, which to me seems like pretty high wind. I've seen it happen. I've seen them blow over on the on Interstate 25. Um, yeah, to answer your question, 
I think the, the use of technology is probably a mix. Uh, technology, well, maybe like a three-prong mix. So using new technology, whether it's space-based or in situ systems like drones to collect observations to build a, a data set of better initial conditions is going to improve the models. Then a lot of compute architecture, uh, CPUs are almost phased out. We're looking at GPUs now, other types of chips to optimize that using AI. And then on the back end, as we've been discussing today, using different types of technologies and capabilities to more rapidly and effectively distribute the watches and warnings. Mr. Jordan, do you have a comment on that? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, I, I would agree with Dr. Jacobs, but also want to mention that uh, in addition to technology and moving next generation technologies into the, the stack of what NOAA uses for a weather forecast is important. And technologies like AI are going to help the, the forecasters do their job, but the, the people in the offices at the local level who understand how wacky the weather can be sometimes yeah. is extremely important. Yeah, wacky is right. I mean, it's both a scientific and real life term <laughs> that we all understand. Um, so uh, if confirmed, I'd ask that you review the National Weather Service arrangements in Wyoming from a weather accuracy and safety standpoint, I want to thank you for meeting with my staff uh, yesterday. I look forward to working with you both, and my time is up. Thank you very much. Uh, the chair recognizes 